Any person at any particular point in time has an unlimited amount of access to sexual novelty by a small device in their pocket. In 2023, someone with multiple tabs open and clicking for a number of hours can experience, experience more sexual partners than our hunter-gatherers did in their lifetime. So it is unsurprising that in today's world, young people are experiencing more depression and anxiety, with many studies pointing towards pornography as partially to blame. And on top of that, young men are experiencing record-breaking levels of erectile dysfunction amongst other problems as well, with studies pointing towards high-speed pornography as a contributing factor. What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And in this video, we'll be delving into exactly how pornography addiction works, how it actually changes how our brain functions. Gone are the days where people will actually buy pornographic magazines or videotapes and they'd actually have to walk to a store and get a single magazine. Those days are far, far gone. And especially in this early generation of young men and women, people have instant access to an unlimited supply of sexual novelty right at the tip of their fingertips, which completely changed the game forever. This is about the excessive and chronic consumption of sexual novelty immediately at our demand, in endless supply, and at a click of a button. So considering all of this, it really comes to no surprise that pornography addiction is on the rise. But the big question is, when does pornography viewing start and when does pornography addiction begin? Well, it actually turns out that the compulsive viewing of porn actually has some long-term effects on how our brain functions, which is actually similar to drug addiction. And if you unfortunately know someone or have experienced yourself a drug or addiction problem, then you probably know the signs associated with addiction. For example, if someone has actually tried to stop watching pornography and they're actually addicted to it, then the actual chance or the actual opportunity to stop watching porn gets in the way, then they actually might be addicted. Or perhaps you can't actually control porn addiction to the point where it gets in the way of your daily functioning, with your relationships, with your work, with your quality of life. And even when realizing all of these negative consequences, you're not able to stop, then it might be a point to seek help. And in recent years, there's been a huge amount of research going into porn addiction and in particular the negative consequences that it has on the human body one of which is sexual dysfunction and in particular erectile dysfunction in males and these statistics on sexual dysfunction are actually astonishing so six studies in particular in 2010 found the rate of erectile dysfunction in males to be 14 to 33 percent and this was in young men not just in old men and this is a thousand percent increase from two to three percent found in studies before the age of the introduction of high speed internet. And erectile dysfunction was not the only symptom that they found. They actually found changes in the ability to climax, unreliable erections, unaccustomed premature ejaculation, alarming porn fetishes, loss of attraction to real partners, and a lot more than that. And strikingly and really alarmingly, in May of 2014, the journal JAMA Psychiatry, which is a very prestigious journal, actually released evidence to suggest that excessive porn consumption can actually lead to a decrease in the amount of gray matter in your brain. And in that study, this showed that excessive porn consumption can actually result in difficulty focusing, problems with storing your memories, decrease in self-regulation, and heightened risk of depression. So with that being said, how exactly does porn addiction lead to biochemical changes in our brain and how it actually functions? Well, it all actually starts with something called the Coolidge effect, which actually explains how sexual novelty can actually drive your behavior. And by the way, when I say sexual novelty, what I mean by that is exposing yourself to new sexual experiences in a way that is continuously new and continuously fresh. So this might be viewing different and new pornography actors, or it might also be viewing and experiencing new and more extreme sexual fetishes. So that is an example of what I mean by sexual novelty. So going back to the Coolidge effect, this actual effect has been shown in rat studies, whereby they place a new female rat in a cage with a male rat, and instantly that male rat has the behavior to go and engage in a large amount of sexual intercourse with his female. Female. However, that male rat eventually tires and that new frenzy of sexual kind of behavior decreases with time with that same female rat. And then what they found is that over time, if they replace this female rat with a new female rat, the same behavior will happen again where the male rat goes and increases his sexual behavior towards this new female rat. And they did this continuously with new female rats over and over again until the point where the male rat tired out. And I guess that comes to no surprise when we look at rat studies because evolution means means that what we want to do as animals is to increase our chances of survival by reproducing and that is the genes number one priority. But of course that is when we're talking about rat studies and humans are different inherently and surprisingly as humans we're one of the rare three to five percent of mammals that actually have the capacity for long-term relationships and long-term complex bonds. However we still are 
animals and we still can be controlled in terms of our sexual behavior and we can change that behavior to sexual novelty in a very similar way to these rat studies. And this can unfortunately affect us on a biological level and change the way our brain works. And as with many addictive behaviors, the root of porn addiction can be placed on dopamine. And as I'm sure you guys know, dopamine is the craving chemical in our brains. It is a signal that your brain releases when you actually endure an enjoyable activity like eating a nice bit of cake, an enjoyable food, going to the gym, or any enjoyable activity that the human body does. And it's this release of dopamine that makes us feel good and therefore encourages us to do this behavior again in the future. It's an extremely powerful chemical in our brains that is essential for human survival. And there are many studies that suggest that someone with clinical depression have lower levels of dopamine in their brain. And therefore, although they may experience the same level of enjoyment or dopamine release from engaging in a particular activity, they actually have less dopamine when it comes to actually thinking about that given activity and therefore less motivation to do that exact activity that they want to do. And that's why for me as a doctor currently working in psychiatry right now, a lot of the drugs that we work with in psychiatry are actually to increase or sometimes decrease the level of dopamine in our brains. Because like I said, with the example of the clinically depressed patient, if you had less dopamine release in your brain, then you'll have less pleasure from engaging in enjoyable activities and therefore be less likely to actually engage in that particular activity. Here is the problem though. Dopamine is not just released by things that are essential for our survival like eating food. It's also released for things that are not essential to human survival like consuming porn, drinking alcohol, or also engaging in drug consumption. When you actually watch porn in particular, it releases dopamine in your brain, making you feel a huge amount of pleasure in your body, therefore making you feel good about that activity and wanting to do it more often in the future. And you therefore can get in this vicious cycle of thinking about pornography or thinking about women or men or whatever you're attracted to, therefore feeling the urge and the need to watch pornography. You then watch it to get the release of dopamine that you're normally used to and therefore reinforce that given behavior, causing you to repeat the whole entire cycle over and over again. In a scientific concept, this is what we as scientists call nerve cells that fire together, wire together. And what that means in the context of pornography addiction is that anything at all that may stimulate you to feel like you want to watch pornography will lead you to therefore watch pornography and therefore causes your brain to be sensitized to that given activity. And that's actually the first brain change that we see with excessive pornography consumption. So how does the mammalian brain actually adapt to an overstimulation of pornography? Well, a lot of the times our brains actually adapt and not necessarily in a good way. Because at first, the actual consumption of pornography may make you feel less tense, more relaxed and more enjoyable. But chronically overstimulating yourself can actually lead to a long term effect known as desensitization, which is the second brain effect that we see with chronic porn consumption. Over time, as you consume more pornography, your brain actually gets desensitized to the material that you watched and desensitized to the stimuli. Because over time, what will happen is that your brain will actually need more levels of hardcore content, unusual scenes, strange sexual acts in order to achieve the same level of dopamine release that you're previously receiving in prior times of your pornography consumption. And as you know, and as I'm sure you can guess, this is what results in pornography addiction. What I found really interesting in my research is that a group of Australian researchers actually put a group of men in a room and exposed them to pornography. And what they found is that over time with the same pornography film being shown, the amount of erections they had and the subjective experience of novelty that they actually reported was a lot lower and decreased over time with the same content. However, as I'm sure you can guess, when they actually reintroduced a new pornographic film or contents to the viewers, they immediately saw an increase in their actual erections and also subjective experience of enjoyment. And yes, women actually showed similar effects. Over time, what they found in studies is that this constant release of dopamine can actually change the way your whole entire dopaminergic system works in your brain. What they found is that not only does it actually desensitize you to porn, it also desensitizes you to other enjoyable experiences like eating or uh, drinking alcohol or whatever it might be for that given person. This actually might make you find it more difficult to enjoy other things in your life that you normally would enjoy and can also increase your risk of other addictive behaviors like overeating. What's particularly disturbing as well is they actually found that the enjoyment you get from normal sexual experiences can also be affected because unsurprisingly, the amount of dopamine that you release in your brain to constantly new sexual experiences and partners is much higher when compared to the same sexual experience with the same partner over time. And unfortunately, this can make normal sexual relationships with normal human beings quite difficult in the real life with long-term partners or with short-term partners. When it comes to porn, 
with the Coolidge effect as well as this dopamine cycle, it actually results in a vicious cycle where a porn user can actually seek out more novel, extreme experiences with these endless supply of novel internet characters. What I actually found interesting as well is that porn addiction can also share the same neurological mechanisms associated with drug consumption. In those rat studies I mentioned where they actually put male studies in a cage with new female rats, what they found is that the amount of dopamine released was actually similar when they injected these same mice with narcotics and things like morphine or nicotine. And it really is quite ironic because the Coolidge effect and this dopamine cycle were made and were put in place by evolution to actually increase your chance of survival and reproduction. And this actually brings me on to my third brain change, which I want to mention, which is dysfunctional prefrontal circuitry, which actually manifests as a reduced willpower, as well as a hyper reactivity to addiction cues. And as scientists, the part of the brain which we know controls the ability to make good decisions to actually have the ability to think about what you want to do as well as inhibit you from bad decisions that's actually all done in the prefrontal cortex which is right here in the front part of your brain and the brain change that they actually see from pornography addiction is like literally having an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other whereby the actual mechanisms in your prefrontal cortex that actually encourage you to engage in a particular activity are actually heightened when it comes to pornography addiction and the actual inhibitors and the pathways that inhibit you from actually going down these routes of behavior where you don't want to that you might be ashamed of later on like for example in the context of pornography addiction these inhibitory pathways are actually inhibited again making it harder to stop yourself from engaging in that particular activity and like i said it's like a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other and currently right now in scientific research there's actually 13 studies which used functional mri studies to look at these brain changes in the prefrontal cortex and what they found is that people who are addicted to porn actually had deranged frontal circuitry as well as poorer executive functioning in these particular users which is very alarming and finally the fourth brain change that i want to add on as well is the malfunctioning stress system which actually manifests as inhibited willpower and a myriad and a combination of withdrawal symptoms when it comes to staying away from pornography the stress system that we have in our body that evolution produced actually helped us either fight off predators or run away from predators but also cause long-term brain changes that allows us to adapt to long-term stressors in our life. And I won't go into this into too much detail because it's very complex, but essentially this stress system that we have in our bodies when we're addicted to porn actually gets dysregulated. And when a porn addict doesn't actually get that next fix from watching porn, their actual stress system goes into overdrive, which causes a whole host of withdrawal symptoms, including anxiety, depression, tiredness, insomnia, irritability, aches, and mood swings, which are also associated with withdrawal with other substances which are not good for our body like with alcohol withdrawal and to this day there are actually three studies so far that have suggested the use of porn addiction and its relationship to actual changes in our body's stress system and the long-term effect that has on our brains so this is a very brief summary in how porn addiction can actually affect our brains and as a doctor i hope i've actually been able to translate the scientific evidence and the research that is currently out there to help anyone who's watching this video if you're actually someone who finds that they probably have a porn addiction through watching this video or through your own research or however you've actually found that out then please make sure you seek the right medical help this is not a video to help you medically this is not any medical suggestions this is just me trying to convert the evidence to help the layperson understand this new phenomenon of porn addiction if you'd actually like me to make a second part of the video where i talk about how you can actually overcome this pornography addiction then please leave a like and make sure you leave a comment down below i'll be more than happy to look into the research and delve into that myself and if you're someone who's interested in how addiction works with drugs or porn or anything in particular and i highly recommend you guys check out this book called your brain on porn internet pornography and the emergence science of addiction it's a great book when it comes to this and right now generally on my job in psychiatry i'm really enjoying delving into these studies of addiction and how addiction with substances or drugs can really affect patients mental health and i'm going to leave it there before this video gets too too long before you guys leave please make sure you leave a like down below make sure to subscribe with notifications on and here are a bunch of videos on my channel that you might also find enjoyable or useful thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one